Also, um, I encourage hecklers, but realize I do have a very bright uh, laser pointer, so at your own peril. So, uh, uh, first off, I just want to say thank you to the organizers of the event. I think this is actually a really great event. Um, I'm pretty burnt out on conferences, and this one is, has enough specificity to make it really interesting, so thank you. So, prescribed burn associations, uh, how many brothers and sisters out there have heard the good word? <laughs> Um, they've kind of become a thing, and we'll get into that, what that is. But really, in a nutshell, I didn't come up with this quote, but it's, you know, uh, community-based burning, burning from the bottom up, right? So instead of agency-led, top-down, it's community-based. Uh, sometimes you hear landowner-led. I think that's a little bit of a misnomer. Um, usually there's RCDs and UC Cooperative Extension and nonprofits involved um, that kind of act as the glue. Um, but they're very much community-based. So this map, for some reason, turned out really blurry, but uh, everywhere with purple has some form of active PBA or uh, prescribed fire council that kind of works like a PBA. So it kind of gives you a, a breadth of the idea of what's going on throughout the United States. Um, and interestingly enough, it was a, an idea that started here in California. Uh, the, the California Range Improvement Associations, as they're called, basically were PBAs. And the idea in the 1950s, 40s, and such uh, took hold in the Midwest, and that's why you actually see a lot of PBAs um, in the Midwest especially. And mostly there, it's actually ranchers burning and very landowner-led, and uh, there tend to be burning mostly to keep uh, eastern red cedar from taking over uh, prairie. So here, this is from Harold Biswell's book, uh, prescribed burning in California. Um, I'd just like to show this because they have much nicer hats than we do. <laughs> um, again, from Harold Biswell's book, 1954, over 250 permitted acres. Um, don't cal tell Cal Fire, but there's still ranchers out there to do some burning without permits. So I imagine in 1954, there was a lot of uh, ranchers doing burning throughout California. So that, that acreage is probably much, much higher. And then you can see it really tails off uh, 1975, that time period. And uh, through the 80s, 90s, it was in a death spiral. And then around 2000, uh, it was basically um, kaput. There are still two uh, PBAs. So again, from Harold Biswell's book, uh, for livestock, grazing for the wildlife habitat and reduce wildfire hazard. Um, I like this photo also because the bottom photo uh, is actually a reburn. So there's, I think, uh, that's two burns, um, and that probably actually shows what uh, people have been talking about with obligate cedars. So in 2017, a very momentous year in California, some really big fires down this way, some really big fires where I was up in uh, uh, wine country. Uh, it's also the year that uh, two colleagues of mine, uh, Lindy Quinn Davidson and Jeff Jeffrey Stackhouse, um, imported the idea back to California, and they started the first PDA in Humboldt County. Um, a lot of their burns are for rangeland improvement uh, on the coast and coastal prairie, and this, this burn here, um, very mellow burn, obviously late spring burn, um, burning right down to the, you know, the buffet there. Um, and that's for Medusa head control. So um, not exactly your uh, barn burner of, a, of an event. Um, this is at least the most updated map that I know of. This is from the Cal PDA website for those who are interested. Um, and it shows you, roughly speaking, I'll get to why, um, where PBAs are starting to happen throughout California. The reason roughly is because some of these aren't really very active. Um, so uh, you, you get a lot of activity in Northern California, um, Sonoma, Humboldt, um, Siskiyou, areas like that. Uh, the Central Coast PBA, which is, I'll talk about in a minute, Monterey, San Benito, Santa Cruz. Um, San Luis Obispo is actually still an active range improvement association, but my understanding is they're mostly working with CAL FIRE on VMP, so not quite a PBA, and the same goes with Santa Barbara. So uh, in 2019, um, Lenya and Jeff did a road show throughout California, spreading the good word, and lots of people got interested, especially ran landowners, 
and uh, we would often, whoa, five minutes. Um, we would often uh, couple these with a burn at the end. So this was kind of the, the burn afterwards. And I like this photo because it really shows you kind of the, the diversity of people, the diversity of uh, uh, attire, the cowboy costume as I like to call it, um, which is perfectly <laughs> great PPE for most circumstances. Um, this was to control yellow star thistle and the lady on the left is actually a wildlife biologist. So our first official burn, um, I think was the year after 2020. It's a training burn. There's some folks here who actually were there. Uh, Greg Feinberg's here, that's actually his truck. Um, and so again, very community based. Everyone's volunteering with a couple people who basically are being paid to organize it or run it if there's a burn boss. And sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Uh, really what we're doing is we're not focusing on acreage. We're focusing on building capacity. Um, and creating this culture, right? There needs to be a cultural shift to do fire throughout California, especially in central and northern California. Um, so we're putting on lots of trainings. We put on things like a Trex event, training exchange. Um, we have equipment, uh, people who help write burn plans. And then at least for the Central Coast PDA, we're very focused on doing ecological burning. Um, and so we're burning in redwood forest, oak savanna, coastal prairie, that's a big focus for us. Pine woodlands, not so much, but a little bit. Coastal scrub, which goes to the coastal prairie. Maritime chaparral and chemise chaparral. So it's titled Cowboys, Indians, and the Fire Curious. And yes, you're welcome to laugh at the term fire curious. Um, um, so, uh, but really it's all of these entities that we're burning with. It's just a wide breadth. Tons of college students who are, you know, one, you know, future land managers, ecologists, foresters. We're actually putting on a forestry trek coming up soon. Um, local tribes, we work very closely with the Amamutsun Land Trust and the Esalen tribe. And then of course, uh, uh, landowners, which can be forested landowners um, or rangeland owners or the mix. Because in Monterey Bay, you can have one 40 acre burn unit and you're gonna have maybe five different uh, ecotypes within that one. Uh, this is something that we started doing with Tim Highland there in the back from State Parks you'll hear about. Um, bringing volunteers who are basic wildland firefighter qualified with the appropriate PPE for a state park burn and burning on state parks. And that's been a really cool program. Um, it's you know, obviously helped their capacity some, but also it gets really good training opportunities for our volunteers. Um, and actually the top photo is something that Tim's going to talk about later. Some more state park burns. Forester treks coming up. Uh, and also we're working with researchers uh, from San Jose State, Kate Wilkins. Two minutes. Um, and UC Cooperative Extension um, and others. And we have uh, various kind of data collecting objectives. Um, most of these are the top two and bottom right are actually a, a coyote brush mortality can we promote coastal prairie with certain mechanical treatments? Uh, the lower ones that you see cooperative extension, uh, trying to imitate grazing um, and the effects on fire. Uh, this is from the Central Coast treks and is uh, the Amamutsen and intertribal actually uh, starting the burn. Um, uh, cultural fire uh, practitioners getting things going for us. This is Isak, one of our interns. He's actually getting paid to, to burn with us and learn. Chanel, she's from the Esalen tribe. There they are starting a burn. There's Chanel doing some post-burn uh, restoration with seed that we collected. Um, and one thing I won't go into, it. I was gonna read it, but this, for anyone who doesn't know, there's been a lot of reference to Crespi earlier. This is an amazing book. It talks about the, the burn history um, throughout North America and really goes from East Coast to West Coast. And it's some of the best accounts that you can find in any one place. And they actually recently republished it. So it's, uh, it's not just at the Bancroft Library. Uh, we're doing a burn where there used to be a, uh, a range improvement association. So I'll just fly through these. Winter burning, chemise burning uh, in the winter. All right. so. Uh, if anyone wants to get a hold of me, that's the way. I highly recommend people check out Cal PBA. Uh, if you're interested in getting connected with your local PBA. Um, and then 
Uh, one last thing I'll just throw in there. Well, two last things. Um, uh, there's a lot of discussion about fire suppression being, you know, this big driver of change throughout California and really the West. And we just have to recognize that colonization was really the first fire suppression. There was so much fire on this landscape, more than we can ever understand. And that colonization just changed everything. So we just have to keep that in mind. And also on a tangent of that is the importance of nomenclature. When we're talking about chaparral, AKA brush in California, we have to be very specific. Earlier I noticed the, uh, the uh, Chaparral Institute map and it had Chaparral going along the coast all the way up into Humboldt. They're talking about coastal scrub on that map, at least for that northern portion. Coastal scrub is a very different plant community than say obligate cedars down in San Diego County. So we just have to get very specific and people have been doing a great job of that so I commend you, but let's keep doing that. <laughs>